I'm back in my overalls, which means gardening season has officially begun. It is a absolutely beautiful, beautiful spring day out today. It's gonna to be 16 degrees today and sunny. I'm so, so excited. And so I think I'm gonna head out to the garden and show you what's going on there. The daffodils right now have absolutely exploded overnight. And so I'm so excited to show you them. They look so stunning. But first I need to get dressed. It's supposed to be quite warm today, but it's not quite there yet. So I still want to be really cozy. So what does that mean? I think I'll wear this Tommy fleece. This is like one of the warmest things I own. It is amazing. I'm not really feeling like wearing jeans, kind of over jeans right now. I'm just going to put on these cotton leggings. I'm just put a black long sleeve on. Maybe I'll put on like a cuter gardening outfit later today or if I end up doing something else. But for now, we'll go basic because it's still a little chilly out. You can see behind me here, these daffodils, oh my gosh. They look so stunning. I interplanted them with a bunch of different varieties of purple pansies and this combo, I don't know why I've never thought of it before, but it just makes so much sense and it looks so sunny and happy and I'm so happy with it. I also planted in the fall some daffodils just in the pathway of the garden and those are kind of mixed in with violets that have naturalized in the rocks there. So it kind of emulates the same sort of thing and I'm just obsessed with the yellow and purple combination. I think it looks so, so good. And it's the only color happening out here right now. I scattered a lot of seeds in this bed in amongst these things so that hopefully flowers can kind of stagger themselves throughout the growing season, but I'm not sure how great the germination is gonna be because I just, don't have great in-ground germination out here. I don't know why. But I planted kind of everything that prolifically self-seeds so that I know they're kind of low maintenance things that you can just scatter in early spring and I'm just gonna hope that they work. So I did a bunch of nigella, which I have high hopes about. Larkspur, I think. I could be wrong, but I think I did larkspur. Bridal silk poppies purple peony poppies, which both of those are the only poppies I'm doing this year. I didn't winter sow any, I'm just doing this method. And my fingers are crossed that this works because the seeds were a little bit expensive for both those varieties. But those are the only ones I'm doing. And then I also did Lunaria, which I know also very prolifically self seeds. Let's see, oh, another one that I planted was a new plant to me called the Rattlesnake Master. I forget the like Latin name for it, but that's what it's referred to. Apparently, I've never heard of it, but I got these seeds from William Dam. They're perennial and apparently they don't like to be transplanted. So I just direct seeded them. They are a native plant. And so with native plants, I don't know if there's any sort of truth to this, but my thinking is just direct sow them and don't baby them. I don't know, I could be totally wrong with that. But anyways, Rattlesnake Master, I'm very excited about that. Fingers crossed it works because I think some tall interest in this center bed would be really nice. So other than that, I'm pretty much sticking to ornamentals in this bed, except for along this um, little trellis thing, I did do peas. I think I did sugar snap peas all along the bottom and they're not popping up yet. Some of them are in the raised beds where the soil is a lot finer, so I think it's easier for them to come up. But I did do peas in this last year and this bed is full of a lot of mulch and compost and it worked totally fine. So I think they'll just be a little bit behind the other ones, but I'm excited about that. I can see a lot of things sprouting up in this bed, but I don't know if that's things that I planted or if they're weed seeds. So I might have to go like reference some 
pictures of what the seedlings look like of the things I planted. Now, this is where things get a little weird. First of all, this raised bed I was so, so proud of last week or the week before that. I've been working on making this bed as charming as possible. I had some old snow fencing that we got from a friend and I've been looking for ways to use it around the garden just for kind of adding a little bit more interest, making things look a bit more aged and weathered because I hate the look of lumber on a raised bed. And so I decided to face my raised beds that were just done with like any scrap lumber we had with this uh, like lath. And so they ended up looking really cool. I really, really liked the finish that it gave. And then where I previously just had chicken wire along the back of this, I wove the lath in amongst there to make it more of a substantial fence and it looked so cute. However, this is like busting open because I just didn't construct them very well last year. So I need to fix that. And this morning my mom and I came out here and we were looking at it. Number one thing, there are so many giant holes in this garden bed i don't know if it's squirrels or like i think it might be moles or a not a groundhog they're too big but maybe moles which i'm really not excited about the thought of they are creating a bit of a tunnel system in here i went in and filled them all and then top dressed this bed seeded it and i'm actually having pretty good germination with the things that i planted however these creatures are back and they've just destroyed so many seedlings. This bed I was so proud of. The rest of the garden is kind of just a mess. And this one I was like, yes, at least this looks cute. But then when we came out this morning, we were looking at all these things, a piece of lath got pulled off of the side of this. So you can see here, there's a completely empty space. So there's one piece here, no piece there and then the rest of these pieces and this stuff is really soft wood it's very old it's very brittle like it's not strong by any means but this is where it gets weird so i'm looking around and there's no piece of wood to be found underneath here so you would think if an animal knocked it off first of all i don't see how they could have because it's the second one down so if they were going to pop something off it would be this and even at that like this trying to take this off that's taking quite a lot of force and same with this one like the lumber that this is nailed into is strong so i don't understand how an animal could have done that and not completely destroyed everything else and not left it sitting right in front of here so this is where you would think that the piece would be no it's all the way over here on the side of this raised bed laying down perfectly straight in line in between this bed and this pot with the nails still in it. So that means that it had to have been ripped out of the lumber, which like I said, I was trying to do by hand and it was not easy. And if you ripped it out by hand, just haphazardly, whether you're animal or human, let me show you how easily this stuff breaks. I broke so many of these by accident, just in the process of trying to get them lined up, hammer them in and cut the edges off of, that I don't see with how brittle these are, how you could have taken that out of there without breaking it. Not only that, but if you were an animal, how did you move this piece of wood, which is probably three and a half feet wide, I would guess, long, I mean, <laughs> how did you get this from here all the way over here and then we have this piece that juts out so that would have meant you had to back it up this way and then slide it in there i just don't understand <laughs> so i don't know if i have a garden ghost or what um what a random thing to do if someone just came in here but like also i don't live around people like really we don't have a lot of neighbors we live beside a field and a forest like there's nobody around so I don't know I don't know can anyone give any sort of explanation for this like is there some sort of animal out there that likes to place things at perfect 90 degree angles like I don't know so my mom and I were talking about this when we saw it trying to reason all of this out and she said that about a week ago in our basement, which is where we keep our seeds and stuff, 
um, like when we're starting seeds. She has a whole bunch of ranunculus plants started. And so they're in little pots like this and then in flats. And she went down one day last week and there was a ranunculus pot sitting in the middle of the floor. So again, like, yeah, I guess an animal could have moved it. Like if we have rats or something, we do live in an old house. So we have like mice and things like that, but it was not close to where the pots were sitting. So I don't know. <laughs> the other thing about this piece of wood is like, there's no bite marks or scratch marks or anything you would think with again how soft this wood is if an animal was carrying this it would le have left marks in it but there's literally nothing so i don't know most of me is just really pissed off about this bed though because i need to now go in and rework it also this weed here i don't know if i can pull this without gloves on yeah i can these things it's like a type of thistle maybe. And they have these long, long tap roots and then they have lateral roots. So this entire bed is so infested with these and they are thriving right now. Like I thought I pulled all of these out last year and then I had more to pull out when I top dressed this bed. And now they're just like having the time of their lives in here. So I don't know, generally a very poo poo kind of garden tour, I'm not really being very encouraging with this, but I'm just pissed off, honestly. <laughs> I also planted so many tulips in the fall. I planted um, like a really, really dark purple, almost black variety, and then a pale pink parrot tulip. And I thought that the pairing of those would be so gorgeous. And they're all like this tall, like with the bud. So I don't know. I don't think it's a good year for tulips, but I'm really annoyed, guys. It's one of the most underrated flower fragrances, in my opinion. Oh, that just smells like pure sunshine. Mm, love it. because they release like a toxin or something when you put them with other cut flowers that kind of just slowly kills those other flowers. I don't know, I haven't like really experimented with this very much, but so you kind of want to keep them just by themselves, but they don't make for easy arranging. Like this is literally just, they're all completely splayed out. I mean, I guess it's kind of a look, but it's not really what I wanted. Should I just go pick a few more? I think I should. They're only gonna keep coming. This is the thing, if you have flowers growing outside and you wanna bring them inside, don't feel bad about that. Like obviously leave enough for pollinators and all that, but like I grew these daffodils so that I could enjoy them inside and I'm still trying to get over that feeling of like almost guilt of taking them in. It's like, no, they're going to keep coming. I have so many buds out there that still haven't opened and this was what they were there for, for me to enjoy them. Okay, this is much better. I went out and got some bridal wreath spirea greens. They're so dainty and delicate at this time of year. And I don't know if it's just like a toxicity to other flowers, like the bloom part, or if these will be fine. I don't know, but I don't really care. If they die off, it's fine. At least the sticks gave these daffodils a little bit more structure. 
and then I forgot we have this beautiful white daffodil in the front yard it's the only daffodil out there and we never see it and so I try to always pick it as soon as I remember and I totally forgot this year and so they're in full beautiful bloom and there was three of them and so I just stuck those in there as well and so I think this looks really really pretty tried to grow last year by winter sowing it because I am absolutely obsessed with the way that they look are globe thistles and I had no success but my mom stole some from her brother's garden this past weekend so if you're watching this Ted thank you these are going to love their new home in my garden they look a little bit sad right now but I'm really really excited to see if they have any success in here because I think they are so stunning and dramatic and I'm really into this like cottage garden sort of feel this year so I think these will really help with that I'm gonna decide where to put them they do get quite tall and I'm kind of thinking I might want them along the back of the garden so I'm gonna think of a placement right now Oh my gosh, the cutest beetle. I think I will cluster them all behind this center bed because exactly in the center eye line of the garden is this ugly ass solar panel. So I think if I plant enough tall things behind this bed here, that will really block out that eye line. So I think these might work for that. tray of ranunculus and anemones, 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 I don't know how you say it, I hear people say it all sorts of different ways, but these should all be flowering not too long from now, so I'm just gonna put them here and there around the garden. They're all different colors, so I'm not gonna be like too orderly about it. working outside for the day but I do have one last gardening chore to do and that is check on my seedlings and see if they need any water I have been so restrained this year because I'm just trying to be very chill about gardening not start anything too soon not start too much of anything and just go with things that I know are very dependable and so so far all I have started and I might be a little bit early with these things but it seems like we're having a pretty warm spring here, so fingers crossed, I'm fine. But if I'm being totally honest, I don't even really care that much. So the first thing that I'm so excited about that I just got into last year for the first time ever are zinnias. These ones I've started inside, and then I'm gonna direct sow a bunch as well. I know people say zinnias don't really like to be transplanted, but that's how I did all of them last year and they were so successful. So again, like I'm just not being that serious about it. But the varieties that I picked for these to start indoors, I just wanted to be more controlled about because they cost a little bit more money. Especially the two that I got from West Coast, which were the two Zinderella varieties, which I'll put pictures of here. The first one is Zinderella Lilac. And then I also have Zinderella Peach. I am so obsessed with the way that these look. My garden is gorgeous at like sunset when it's backlit and all the colors are so like soft but rich at the same time. And I think that these two 
tones combined are gonna be so gorgeous in that like really low late summer light. And then I also have Green Envy and then Oklahoma, was it? Oklahoma Ivory because I love a white zinnia. My mom grew some last year and I tried to save the seed, but I don't think I marked the flower right. So I don't know where those went. And so I'm so excited to have these in my garden. And then in terms of food, I completely skipped out on tomatoes last year, but I have a few varieties this year that I have never heard of. Chocolate cherry, I have heard of. I think I've grown that before. But then two completely new varieties to me are Napa Chardonnay and Farthest North. And all three of these tomato seeds I got from Northern Wildflower Seed Company, I think it's called. I also have some cucumbers started. I have a Burpless Muncher. <laughs> it's always a funny name. I love taking the little seeds off the top of the leaves. And then I had some seeds left over from last year of a new favorite of mine, which is a lemon cucumber. Some people think these are a little bit weird tasting, but I absolutely love them. And then I also just started some marigolds. Some of them, yeah, they're doing okay. This is a Bonita mix from Mr. Fothergill's, just for like pest management and stuff like that. I think they're pretty. And the Bonita mix has really nice like not too like neon-y orange kind of colors to it. There's some really pretty like deep red tones in this mix, which I really like. I'm gonna get misting these and then I'm gonna relax because I'm being honest, I actually have the stomach flu right now and I shouldn't really be doing this much, but my energy's kind of back. I'm just so extremely nauseous. So I need to go relax. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some gardening inspiration and ideas, and I hope you're excited for spring gardening. If you enjoyed it, you can give it a like down below, and you can also subscribe if you wanna know every single time that I post. And I will see you next time.